Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to prove these trig identities. So here the sine and cosine and tangent are complex valued um, trigonometric functions. So uh, basically the first statement is saying that sine is an odd function. That's what it means for something to be odd, right? When you plug in a negative z, you can pull the negative out. Likewise, this is saying that tangent is odd. Plug in the negative z, you can pull the negative out. That's what it means for a function to be odd, right? When you put a negative here, it just, it just comes out. This is saying that cosine is even, right? Because it gets rid of the negative sign. Um, you plug in a negative z, you just get back z. That's what it means for a function to be even. So let's go ahead and prove all of these. Before we do though, um, we have to know what these definitions actually are. So they might not be what you think. So the sine of z, remember z here is a complex number, is e to the i z, okay, e to the i z minus e to the negative i z and it's all divided by 2i. So that's the definition for the uh, complex valued sine function, right? And then the cosine of z, okay, that's going to be e to the i z plus e to the negative i z all over 2, right? That's the complex valued cosine function. And so the tangent function is sine over cosine. So the complex value tangent function is sine z over cosine z. So this is very similar to what you see in trigonometry, right? So super similar. Okay, we got this. We should be able to do this no problem at all, right? I think. Let's try it. I have not tried it, so let's, let's see. So proof of one. I'm sure I've done this at some point. I just, let's just do it together now. Sine of negative z. So basically that means, so I'm gonna write this down and show it's equal to this. We replace all of the z's with negative z's. So this is going to be, let's see, so e to the i negative z, yep. So e to the i negative z, and then minus, minus e to the negative i, and then negative z, all over 2i. So all we've done at this point is we've replaced z with negative z in both cases. So this is equal to e to the negative iz minus e, negative and negative is positive, right? So this becomes iz and it's all over 2i. So we're trying to show it's equal to negative sine z. So this is sine z, so this is almost there. So the natural thing to do is to try to pull out a negative one and see if it works. Let's try that. So I'm gonna pull out a negative one here. When I do that, this one's gonna come up in the front, it'll be positive. And then minus, I'm gonna put a minus here to make that one a plus when we distribute through. Right, because if I do, if we do negative one times, negative and negative is positive, right? Negative times this is this, so this times this is this, this times this is this, yep, looks good. This is sine z, right? So this is equal to negative sine z, right? This is precisely the definition of, of sine z, right? You can see it uh, over here. So that completes the first proof. Let's do the second one. I'll do it over here. Proof, proof of two. So proof two. So proof for two, um, we'll start the same way. We'll plug in negative z for cosine. So cosine of negative z. And so as before, we just go to the definition of cosine and replace z with negative z. This is e to the i, negative z, plus e to the negative i, negative z, all over, all over two, right, all over two. It's a natural thing to do, right? You start with, with one side, and then you just carefully show that it's, it's equal to the other. So let's see what's going on here. Um, I guess let's just distribute this a little bit, make it look better. So this is e to the negative z, plus e to the, oh, I forgot the i, plus e to the i z, right? So this negative comes here and this becomes positive and this is all over two. Yep, looks like we're still good. Um, the only thing left to do now is maybe rearrange it to make it look like this. So this is equal to e to the i z plus e to the negative i z all over two. And this is, this is cosine z. So it's what we started, what's the original function we wanted, right? So the cosine of negative z is equal to the cosine of z, boom, done. Let's do proof three, right? Let's do that one. I think this one should follow my plan is to use the previous two to do this one. So let's do it. So tangent of negative z 
Well, let's use the definition of tangent, right? So it's a sine of negative z, sine of negative z over cosine of negative z. Sine is odd, that's what we proved a minute ago, so this is negative sine z. Cosine is even, so it eats negative sines. We just proved that a minute ago, so this is cosine z. So we get negative sine over cosine. So we get negative tangent. So this proves that the tangent function is odd. Boom, that's how pros do it. So kind of a cool problem to do, especially with complex numbers. So it's a different perspective. And if anything, if you've watched this video, it's helped you, right? At least you know, not, if you didn't know this, maybe you know, or maybe you forgot, right? So these are a little bit different than our real friends, right? These are our complex friends and they live in a complex world. So take care.